Hello again, dear friends and colleagues. I hope you had a good lunch, and if you're joining us for the first time, we hope to hear your voice in the session ahead, which is called The Role of Infrastructure and Storage. If you weren't here with us this morning, we'd like you to send in your questions and comments using Slido. That's slido.com, and the code you will need is hashtag 2023ETC. There it is up on that big screen, slido.com. Hashtag 2023ETC. We'd love to hear from you. We had lots of questions this morning, and let's see if we can beat the record this afternoon. So, our session is called The Role of Infrastructure and Storage. And why is it so important? Because in integrated energy systems and value chains, we heard quite a lot about the need to create integrated systems this morning, we need cross-border cooperation, don't we? They're essential for flexibility, and for economies of scale, but they're not going to be easy, and that's what we're going to be discussing in the session ahead. We're going to start uh, looking at pipeline infrastructure. What is the position here in Norway, and what are the ambitions to build it out? Please welcome Froda Leverson, the CEO of Gasco. Hello, everybody. I'm always dreamt to do this, to come out on a stage like this, but not after lunch. Uh, seven minutes, so I think I start right away. Uh, has been a topic and discussed uh, also earlier this morning. But what's it, what is infrastructure? Uh, don't look at me, I'm inside a pipe, look at the pipe. This is a, a small part of the long lead pipeline. Uh, th this is only 20 uh, centimeter long, but the long lead, long lead pipeline goes from Møre uh, Romsdal from the new Havna plant and to Easington in the UK. So you can imagine this is only to show you the size of the pipeline and how it looks, li looks like. We have 9,000 kilometers of pi pipelines on the Norwegian continental shelf. So you can see it on the map. You can see uh, all the dots in the North Sea and the Norwegian Sea. This is uh, producing fields. So they are representing uh, a producing field, gas and associated gas from oil producers. So in, in total, as I said, 9,000 kilometers of pipeline. And as you see on the map, they go directly into the market. There are three pipes going into Germany. There are pipes into Belgium, France, and two into UK. So this is a fantastic system. It's developed since the early 80s. Uh, and this is what it looks like today. And you all know the, the importance uh, of this, show, showing the next, next figure, 1286, which is the volume of energy produced from Norway to Europe last year in terawatt hours. So it, then you have the kind of the, the magnitude. If you then go go further on and look at the next picture. This is only to illustrate that when I'm talking about the Norwegian infrastructure for gas, the future infrastructure must be interlinked. So this is offshore wind, it's solar. We need to find solutions for CO2. We need to produce hydrogen. And the new system we need will be interlinked. But my starting point, of course, in my job is the infrastructure for nature gas. Uh, so moving on, if we agree on that we need an uh, interlinked energy system, then we need people, we need competence, we need innovation and technology. But there is one key word missing on this one, and you all know that that's collaboration. We need to, to, to put things together. So a lot of students here, uh, so this is, this is also uh, to you. We really need to think holistic about solutions for the future. Uh, and one example of thinking holistic, thinking in totality, is a project launched in March last year, uh, where uh, an agreement of uh, finding out who we can est uh, do the <coughs> establishment of infrastructure from uh, Norway to Germany on hydrogen. This was a feasibility uh, st study agreement, and I will now go into that. Uh, this is an example of 
utilizing uh, first the the, the um, ambitions for politicians, but then utilizing the work processes and working through industry to launch such a project. So. Uh, in, uh, GASCO is responsible for this project in Norway and using, we are using our competence and we are using our work process with the Norwegian industry and DENA has the same role in Germany. And uh, Andreas after me uh, will this. But how can then a hydrogen, well, new hydrogen value chain look like? It will be like this and this is important because we need to start with production. So, we need to have big producers, this is of blue hydrogen, to scale up. Secondly, we need to have hydrogen transport systems, which is in the middle of, of, uh, of the page. And then also, of course, downstream, we need hydrogen transport system, we need distribution, storage and consumption. This project, I'm now talking about taking all this into account. And that is necessary. Uh, and, and, and again, a key word is scaling. But then, this is not enough. Because when I mean, we are utilizing the infrastructure for, for transporting hydrogen, we also need the same for CCS value chains. This illustrates that producing hydrogen in Norway, we need also to remove the CO2. In the middle, you can see the, the CO2 pipeline system, which also in, is interlinked to the, the storage area on the Norwegian continental shelf. And then you can also see that this also, of course, gives the possibility to collect CO2 from the continent and back to the Norwegian continental shelf. And then, by doing all this, Remember what I starting with, my, my first picture, the, the pipe and the pipeline system, uh, system in Norway, then it will look like this. So this is, the, this, this is the concrete project we are now studying. The red pipe you see is Europipe 1, and the dotted pipe beside that is a new hydrogen pipeline. This is in the industry project now. It's, it's nothing kind of uh, as a fugel uh, på as we say in Norwegian. <laughs> this is actually happening now. Um, and you can see that it's also the dotted line into the Norwegian coast is, lo is where the location for big hydrogen producers are located. There's not taken decisions yet on the location for some of them, but that is also a part of, of uh, this uh, project. Then, also the same for CO2 transport. So now we are doing the same. You can see on the coast of Norway, we have storage facilities. This is a license which is awarded today, and also more licenses will come. <coughs> and then you see the collecting point in Germany and Belgium. This also is going on right now. This is nothing, this is, this, is, uh, this is a concrete project. I was kind of in the beginning of the conference. Uh, I, I, <coughs> I was urged to, to, to tell about things which is really going on, and this is really going on. So, thank you for the attention. <laughs>